Hey, good um, good day, good morning, uh, wherever you are. Um, my name is Ansi Dumontier, and I represent LM Dental here in uh, North America, covering US and Canada. So today we are talking about um, hand instrument ergonomics. Um, we will give you a brief overview um, how this all came about back in the day, how things are looking today, and how LM instruments compare to other good instruments out in the marketplace uh, from the ergonomic uh, perspective. So um, it'll be about you know 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer than that. And then at the end, there will be uh, an opportunity to um, um, have questions, hopefully answers, or if you have a cool story out there relating to instruments or ergonomics, would love to hear that too. Okay. So let's get started here. Um, as you probably know, uh, feel the difference is the LM slogan. And that strongly, of course, relates to the ergonomics because even today, LM instruments feel very different in a positive way compared to any other known um, uh, brand instruments in a marketplace. Just a little bit about the overall um, improvements and the innovations that aid these ergonomic um, instruments. So, as you also might know, LM has a very strong roots in the Nordic countries in uh, Scandinavia. All of LM instruments are manufactured uh, in Finland at LM facility. And today uh, we use state of the art. Um, automatic um, robotic units to manufacture instruments. In fact, some of the instruments today are made completely using um, automatic manufacturing um, steps. Even though LM is um, deeply connected and located in Finland, in Scandinavia, um, our products today are used and most importantly trusted by a variety of dental professionals all over the world. Now, as far as how this all happened, so back in the day, this goes back to 60s and 70s and um, bits and pieces uh, to 80s. So a dentist who was also a professor, Dr. Pangasniemi in Finland. So he was the founder of LM Dental and already in the 70s, he defined a certain principles that um, an ergonomic hand instrument should have. And the reason why he did this, um, he needed to purchase and use instruments for his practice and for teachings. Um, he was unsatisfied with the instruments available um, in the marketplace at the time. So instead of just complaining about it, he started designing on higher quality and perhaps even more importantly, um, better ergonomic value dental hand instruments. So the principles that guided him how an ergonomic instrument should be. So first of all, the grip should be um, um, solid and the grip should help uh, clinical work. The size of an instrument had to be larger. At that time, the size of a handle was very, very small diameter. Also the shape. So according to Dr. Kangas um, the ideal ergonomic shape was not necessarily just a round tube. So instrument handle could be shaped differently. For example, having a little bit of an hourglass um, shape to it. Also the material of the handle Back in the day, um, instruments were only metal handle. So in his ergonomic principles, the material had to be such that at the same time, it promoted a comfortable and secure grip. And of course, provided that constant um, um, comfortable feeling, secure feeling for the practitioner 
but without compromising the tactility or the tactile sense of the instrument. So a metal was not ideal um, uh, material for a handle from ergonomic perspective. And this is already something he, you know, he defined back in the 70s and 80s. Overall, instrument needed to be lighter weight and easy to handle, whether it's simply handling it during a dental procedure or um, handing instrument back and forth, or simply reprocessing, putting away and taking instrument out from a tray or a cassette. Um, this good dentist did not come up with all these principles completely by himself. He was and continued to be in constant communication with other dental practitioners, dental educators, and of course, experts outside of you know, dental field. What's interesting, so back in the 80s, when LM was really um, pushing for um, better ergonomic value instruments, um, the product thesis at that time were considered pretty radical, especially considering what the other good um, instrument makers were doing. Um, but today, so now, 2023, here are six points, and we're just quickly looking at these and thinking, what are instrument manufacturers doing of these, um, of these ergonomic um, um, pieces or details today to incorporate better ergonomics into their handles? So number one, I think it would be fair to say that when it comes to overall larger diameter handle and overall lighter weight than they used to be, this is something in all fairness I think all manufacturers are doing today. Number two, optimize shape. So talking about the shape is not necessarily, or the ideal shape, is not necessarily just a straight uh, tube, but the shape can have different configuration, um, for example, like an hourglass shape. Only some, not many manufacturers are doing this. And what's um, interesting about this, this is something that, um, for example, LM Dental has been doing some decades now. When it comes to color coding, uh, that also plays an important factor in ergonomics. Only some manufacturers are introducing colors to make identification of instruments quicker and easier. When it comes to um, balance of instruments, so how well balanced the instrument is and the tip and the back sweep in relationship to the handle, the center line, again, in all fairness, I think most manufacturers now are providing well balanced instruments. Then the last two points, having a separate um, core structure and then a different outside layer. So in this case, for example, the metal core delivering tactility and then the outside then material um, silicone to provide grip. Um, only LM Dental today of the known um, high quality manufacturers um, offer these ergonomic features. And again, what's what's quite interesting, um, these theses and these um, um, ideas were put in practice already in the 80s. And here today, 40 years later, there are still good manufacturers out there who have not incorporated a basic um, ergonomic principles to instrument, dental instrument handles. Now, so why is um, instrument ergonomics and instrument ergonomics even important. So I think most of you have taken um, courses, practices in overall ergonomics. And of course, um, as you know, dental practitioners do so much using their hands a lot. And therefore, I mean, hands are absolutely crucial to a dental practitioner, especially in a clinical uh, dental environment. So when good ergonomics, this is not only about hand instrument ergonomics, but overall, um, when good ergonomic principles and practices are followed, 
most commonly they prevent injuries during those tasks performed. Preventing injuries often prevents uh, pain. And of course, when a person or practitioner is not injured or suffering from pain, they don't have to call in sick, they can continue to work. When you're feeling good, you know, struggling with the pain and you're able to show up, uh, certainly you can keep up even enhance uh, productivity. And I think it's only a common sense and a fair statement when a dental practitioner uh, doesn't suffer from pain, is not battling with an injury, they can work, make a steady income uh, while doing that. All those things help to live in a better overall quality of life. You know, one less thing to worry about, being pain-free. Um, specifically, not that this doesn't apply to all dental work, uh, but specifically in clinical dental work, when a practitioner is performing uh, procedures in an operatory, um, musculoskeletal disorders are a very common problem, unfortunately. Of a common dental procedure, uh, bridge procedures, excuse me, many studies are showing that a periodontal scaling and root planing, so manually removing calculus from different tooth surfaces, um, those are the most, most straining procedures when it comes to hand uh, ergonomics. Here is um, an outcome of a very interesting survey. So two um, well-known ergonomic educators here in the United States approximately a decade ago did a survey that had well over 1,000 dental hygienists uh, participating in it from the US and Canada, uh, the participants were from. So more than half of those individuals had suffered from injury, and many reported multiple injuries. And these are not like, you know, slip and fall injuries. These are injuries when they were performing their clinical work, primarily removing calculus um, from tooth surface. One out of five participants was worried about getting hurt while working. And of the people, so more than half of these uh, participants um, who reported um, that they had suffered uh, from one or more injury, the most common sites that were injured from that repetitive motion were first of all, their dominant hand, and in that hand, the thumb, then other fingers, and then the shoulder of that dominant uh, and dominant arm. There was an interesting study, and this study here also um, was published. So if you would like to see a copy, we'd be happy to share. So this study was also approximately a decade ago. This was done by the Finnish government um, Institute of Occupational Health, and it was conducted at the University of Helsinki. And this was an ergonomic comparison study. So the participants, um, their actual muscle activity was measured during a simulated um, uh, dental procedures. Uh, the outcomes of the work, so the work results were studied by the organizers. And during and then after, the participants were also providing feedback. They were themselves evaluating the usability between the different um, instruments used and how they felt about the strain when they were um, um, performing those uh, procedures. In this study, there were um, five different curettes, each um, a Gracie 1112, so mesial surface curette used from different manufacturers um, showcasing different style of handles. So there were two handles from LM Dental, the LM Ergo Sense, which at the time was a prototype, but very much like um, it ended up being, and also the LM Ergo Max. These were both a little bit larger diameter compared to the other participants, simply because LM makes a little bit larger diameter handles as a standard um, operation. There were two additional handles from uh, Euphredi Manufacturing Company, 
there was an old school, very small diameter at six millimeters, so quarter inch, and then a more contemporary, um, larger stainless steel handle that was three eighths of an in inch, so nine and a half millimeter in diameter. Then uh, last but not least was a plastic handle from American Eagle Manufacturing Company. And that was the same size than the Euphrates stainless three eighths, nine and a half millimeter. And as I mentioned earlier, this test also concluded and actually you know, scientifically proved by measuring the muscle activity that the calculus removal was the most stressing treatment uh, compared to other common treatments there. And therefore, that manual calculus removal that has the highest risk for um, CTS. And while ergonomics is important to everybody and all dental practice, it is specifically important to um, dental practitioners performing manual scaling. Typically, that is a hygienist, also a periodontist, or can be a GP who performs um, um, scaling uh, themselves. Here are a couple of pictures of that comparison um, study or more of the setup. As you can tell, the practitioners were hooked up on the uh, on a device that actually measured the muscle uh, activity and the impulses. And the um, results were, um, well, to us maybe not a big surprise, there had been 18 different evaluation points, and both of the silicon handle instruments, Ergosense and the Ergomax, um, scored the highest in those different evaluation points. What was interesting is the, um, the folks who put together this study, the organizers, they also concluded that the best work results were also um, um, achieved by using the instruments with medical grade silicon handle. And those were the ones, you know, from LM company. Um, from purely scientific perspective, during that scaling, the least amount of muscle strain was measured and recorded when the practitioners were simulating and use, you know, simulating the use uh, when they were using the LM silicone surface handled compared to either metal or plastic um, surface handles. So as I mentioned, um, this was about a decade ago. It's still um, very valid. And this was published. So if you would like to read it, be glad to share it with you. Now, these two here are those particular handles that were involved from LM Dental. So on the right hand side, you can see that LM Ergo Max. So this is our classic design. We've had this handle available probably 20 plus, maybe not quite 30 years um, from the 90s. I think it was first introduced. So medical grade surface, and it has a little bit of that hourglass shape. It's at 11 and a half millimeter from the largest point. On the left hand side, is the newer and the latest instrument handle option from LM, and this is the LM Ergo Sense. So it's the same material, medical grade silicone. There is still metal core underneath, like there is in the Ergo Max, but this is larger in diameter. It also has significantly more of that contour shape, you know, the hourglass uh, overall shape. It is 14 millimeters um, diameter, and not so much ergonomics, but, you know, interestingly enough, in the modern dental world, the ErgoSense is optionally available with the RFID microchips embedded into the handle. This is for um, um, practices or institutions who are interested in contemporary tracking and tracing of their products and materials. Um, here is another um, study. This was conducted um, at a university in Italy, uh, 2014. So again, about 10 years ago. This was a um, um, ergonomic evaluation 
comparing three different types of handbooks. Um, so type A was a very skinny old school metal handle. Type B, maybe you can see the picture there, was um, Euphrates style um, stainless steel handle. And type C was the Ellen Ergo Max um, medical grade silicone surface. And the participants were scoring uh, from zero being minimum and four being the max score. Uh, three categories, how efficient the instrument was and felt in the evaluation, how safe it felt, and how comfortable it felt. And then, of course, based on those, the instruments were given the overall acceptability score. And here we are going to remove the type A because those are not so, I mean, they're still used, but hopefully not so much. And I think comparing B to C, so larger metal to silicone handle, probably be more fair and meaningful comparison. So when comparing silicone to a metal, um, silicone had 29% improvement in efficacy. Uh, the safety was scored or improved 50% compared to the um, metal handle. Comfort, uh, the improvement here was 16% uh, for silicone. And overall, uh, silicone was rated 30% higher uh, compared to metal in this evaluation. Person, good question if the comfort uh, difference um, um, might have been um, a bigger or greater if the evaluation continued for a longer time period. But these were the um, outcomes from this ergonomic evaluation um, that took place in Italy. Now, here is a picture of um, Euphridi Manufacturing um, Company's product catalog. Um, Euphridi has been a good competitor to LM in some global markets, but um, if you look at the um, handle options listed there, the very top one here is called Harmony. Um, this was introduced um, a year or two years ago, somewhat recent. This is the only handle that is categorized as an ergonomic handle. And the difference compared to the previous ones is that it's no longer completely straight uh, tube. It has a little bit of that hourglass shape to it. We at LM were very happy to see that now in the 21st century, um, other manufacturers are starting to validate that um, the shape, as Dr. Kangas Niemi already um, um, listed back in the 80s, um, is a meaningful detail to improve ergonomics. The other difference here compared to the previous model is that those little silicone rings towards the end of the handle are a little bit wider than they used to be. So here you can see another picture of that handle on the left-hand side. And in this manufacturing company um, marketing material, um, it says uh, silicone grips are expended by 30% to provide um, a secure and nimble crafts. So they got extended by two or three millimeters compared to the um, old ones. Now they are approximately 10 millimeter wide each. So when that small extension to silicone ring on a handle, when that alone provides a secure and nimble grasp, imagine what would an entire silicone handle do? And here on the right-hand side is a picture of the Ilan Ergo Sense. And that is silicone, the entire surface, very secure and quite nimble uh, crass. Now the colors. So I mean, the colors look great, but there is a very, very significant ergonomic uh, meaning behind this. So when Ellen first introduced colors in the 70s, the idea was that already from the corner of the eye, practitioner can identify and know which instrument they need to take next from the tray or a cassette. And what that does 
it eliminates that back and forth um, um, motion by a practitioner accidentally taking a wrong instrument or having to lean over the tray and trying to look at the tiny tips and decide which one is the one I need. With color coding, it's instant, it's immediate, and it really promotes the um, ergonomics and easy workflow. It may sound like a very small thing to maybe once or twice have to reach for an instrument, but when you have five to nine appointments every day and you do it a lot, it really adds up. Now, we earlier we talked about that um, manual scaling was the most taxing procedure ergonomically. Um, from most common um, tender procedures. So here are um, LM, um, two categories of curettes and scalers that fall within the category. So on the right hand side is the um, LM Dura Great Max, um, a super spiel. This is a conventional instrument from LM. These tips you can and you have to periodically resharpen. It's like from that perspective, it's a regular instrument like any other instrument out there. Um, on the left-hand side is the other option. So some years ago, we introduced a line called LM Shock Diamond. This is the completely shock and free line of um, hygiene and periodontal instruments. These tips, you do not shock them. In reality, when the practitioners don't always find the time to sharpen instruments as often as they perhaps should be sharpened. Uh, the sharp diamond instrument really is ideal from the ergonomic perspective because here the sharp cutting edge stays sharp and effective. So the practitioner does not have to start compensating a cutting edge that may be becoming dull by adding more lateral pressure just because of that. Of course, a practitioner could always quickly sharpen a regular instrument and be in about the same position, but as we know, it is difficult to find the time to properly sharpen an instrument as often as sharpening should be done. Now, our distributor and friend up in Canada a couple of years ago came up with this um, cool statement when you hold anything for up to 2,000 hours, you better be comfortable. And okay, so is every single practitioner holding an instrument for 2,000 hours? Maybe, maybe not. But I think it really reminds uh, the practitioner that, hey, you are using instruments a lot, many, many hours, hundreds, if not thousands. What you hold so much in your um, uh, profession, in your daily work, what you use so often, that really should be comfortable. Um, I think the LM products, specifically the ErgoSense, is, it feels great in a hand. That was it for now. And thank you for uh, joining and listening. And now, if you do have any questions, it would be a pleasure. You answer, or if you have a story you'd like to share, would love to hear that as well.